overtime in that one. Here, a four and a five. The Florida Bull with a 12-point lead over Illinois. The last time the Illini got below 10 was at the 11.50 mark in this half. 27 for Bradford. Miller, 17 points, nine rebounds. And that will send right to the line for two. We're in the double bonus. In a game of contrast, you have, a, as we said, Florida, a team that you cannot allow to play their game. They want to play frenetic pace. They don't mind turning it over occasionally. They don't mind taking a bad shot occasionally, but they want to get that tempo going. Illinois fell into the trap, tried to play the same game, and they're not as good at it as is Florida, and that's the reason we're looking at a score that's been double digits. Back at HSBC Arena, 57-57. Temple and Seton Hall all tied up, going into overtime. No Pepe Sanchez picking up his fifth personal foul. No Shaheen Holloway injured his left ankle in the first half. Overtime record, Seton Hall is undefeated. Temple yet to play an overtime game this season. And without Sanchez, he missed eight games this year because of injuries. Quincy Wadley stepped in and played the point. Quick tip, which is good by Dallin Bear, but you're right, with the point guard position, they did struggle without him in the lineup. Let's see what they can put together in terms of an offensive effort here in overtime. How much does Seton Hall have left taken to overtime in the first round against Oregon? That is a great question, and I'm not sure they know. Lane, kick out for Shine, 14 to shoot. Allen Barrow was looking for a lob just then. Caucanus puts it on the floor. The floater, short. And Sanders is there for the ball. Good defensive stop to start things off. Barnes a factor defensively in the middle of the gut of the defense. Tied at 57, first minute of OT. I don't expect either one of these two teams to get flustered if the other scores first on them. Greer fires it back door. Sanders uncontested dunk. Talk about your mental lapses. A tough time to have one. Seton Hall just not really sure whom was picking up. Temple leads by two. Here's Wilkins who had a chance to end it in regulation. Lane. He's got it for three. Somebody has to step up and help shine, and it's Lane. He can let it rip, and keep in mind, he's a very streaky shooter. 16 points, 13 rebounds for the sophomore Darius Lane. In a matchup defense here by Seton Hall. They're confused, though, again. Pirates up by one. Wadley gives up his dribble. 15 on the timer. Carter at three. Air ball. Wadley trying to save it. Out of bounds. Look at the seam, look at the breakdown. That's an unchallenged basket in overtime. Not how you set him up defensively. John Chaney will surely take it, though. Change for Seton Hall as Greg Morton checks into the game. Chaney sticking with the players that he has on the floor, with no Pepe Sanchez. We may see Kevin Wide, though, get some action in overtime as he pops off the bench. Just keep in mind with Lane and Caucanus. They're really the two scorers, and you have a role player in Ty Shine who has stepped up like a superstar this afternoon. This game has been so tight. Wilkins kick out for Shine as we approach three minutes left in overtime. Here's Lane with a bounce. Shine, cross court. Caucanus at three. Oh, rims in. Feel the rim. Oh, my goodness. See it all, but scouting report early in the game has stopped Caucanus, stopped Lane from shooting threes. All of a sudden, they've reawakened. 18 points for the senior from Lithuania. Oh, did he ever use the rim on that one? With the soft touch, the good rotation, and that hugs the rim for you. Karcher, ball fake, takes it around Morton. Leaner with the left hand, and he gets the roll. Oh, friendly rims, a nice drive by Karcher. 26 for Karcher. We talked last week. tell you, both of these teams are really leaving it on the floor, though. It's fun to watch. Here's Lane lining it up. Can't hit the three, and the rebound to Sanders. Had to put the ball on the floor. He's a better standstill shooter than off the dribble, but still got a pretty good look that trip. Under two minutes to play in overtime. Two-point Seton Hall edge. 
Greer looking to the interior. They'll keep it on the perimeter. Here's Greer. Open look at a three. Book it. There's where the matchup has given Seton Hall problems. Greer with a good look because the rotation was late. Tommy Anarka may have to switch defenses. They're not getting that rotation quick enough to the perimeter. The Owls lead by one. Shine will put it on the floor. Bucket starts to get smaller up there in tough situations. Come up on one minute to play. Shine pulling the trigger. He can't hit the three. Rebound foot four. Oh, somebody pushed off in the middle. And it was Sanders. Where's your rotation? Here's the man over here. Supposed to be a step out. Late by lane, didn't react quickly. You have problems when you leave shooters. And a problem right now for Seton Hall. Darius Lane has some blood that they will have to tend to. You just, uh, it's so fragile that all the, the dreams that can disappear so fast. Just talk to Arizona. 463. Falling to Gonzaga in the Sweet 16. He said just how quickly you can lose something. Our team walked away realizing that last year in the tournament. We're advancing Florida now to Syracuse and the East Regionals Friday Sunday site at Syracuse. Well you remember who Florida lost to last year Jim? With Gonzaga. <laughs> A team that is uh, back in the hunt this year. Seventeen point lead Florida boy they have been tremendous front runners today Bradford comes out what a game today after being off the mark Friday broken nose and all playing in the tournament health surgery tomorrow it was scheduled win or lose and he would have been back had their fortunes been a another story today he would have been able to return from the surgery and play in the sweet 16 he's out with 27 broke his own uh, record three point shooting this year. We'll be back, and as you said, this. Minute 14 left in overtime. Temple leads by one. Take you back 48 hours ago. Seton Hall in overtime against Oregon. And Shaheen Holloway, a little magic at the end of the extra session to give the Pirates the win. But Holloway has been a spectator here today for most of the afternoon after injuring his left ankle in the first half. His replacement, Ty Law, Ty Shine, has done an outstanding job. And his team is down by just one with Greg Morton going to the free throw line. A 52% free throw shooter. He's taken 40 shots on the season. Been bothered by that right shoulder a bit that you see that padding on. Has no free throw attempts today. No field goal attempts either. And now Tommy Amaker can just hope for the tie. This is where you pull four guys aside at the break of this. In Salem, not so in Buffalo. In the East Region, Seton Hall and Temple. A minute 13 to play in overtime. The Owls by one. High and Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Coming up on one minute to play in overtime. Temple leading Seton Hall 64 to 63. And a timeout taken. 103 left. Owls have the ball when we come back. Game reset. Temple with the 64 to 63 advantage. A minute three left on the clock. You see the timeout situation. The possession arrow favoring Temple. And the Owls do have the ball. Two missed free throws from Greg Morton that could have given Seton Hall the lead. Well, with 103, strategy starts the mount right now at both ends of the floor. Seton Hall's perspective down one. You want to make sure you play sound defense. And if the shot clock does wind down, do not get caught reaching needlessly. Here's Greer. One minute left on the clock. In OT. Remember, no Sanchez on the floor, so a different look from the point. Wadley defended by Caucasus. Using the clock with 12 to shoot, 47 seconds to play. Temple up by one. Karcher, pump fake, spin, loses the ball, but a reach in foul. Lane is the culprit. Dallenberg stepped across beautifully on the defensive end. Karcher spins away from it, and the lane reach in. 
Mark Karcher goes to the free throw line. Look at Dallabear there with his beautiful step across and lane coming down across the arm. Mark Karcher will hit to the line. Two of six here today. 58% of the season. And he gets the roll on the first. Coming up next, more action from the NCAA tournament. Miami and Ohio State. And the top seed in the East, Duke, taking on Kansas. Florida beating Illinois. Well, the Gators will move on. One out of two for Karcher. And a two-point game with 40.2 remaining in overtime. Pirates have the basketball. But we come back to Buffalo. Temple 65, Seton Hall 63 in overtime. Take a look at the big picture now. What's taking place here in Buffalo, Oklahoma State, the three seed has already moved on to Syracuse. They will meet the winner of this Temple Seton Hall matchup. Florida knocks off Illinois, so the five seed moves on, and they will await the survivor of Duke, Kansas, coming up. And you will be seeing the Duke, Kansas game coming up from Winston Salem. Not going to be crazy enough to make any predictions anymore. <laughs> it's up for grabs the way I'm looking at this. Owls lead by two. Pirates playing in their second consecutive overtime game to open up the 2000 NCAA tournament. One shine to handle the basketball as much as possible here. A six second difference. Shot clock to game clock. Down two, you can go towards the basket, but don't be surprised to see Calcanus or Lane try to light one up. Here's Calcanus off penetration. Shine couldn't handle it initially. 17 to shoot. 20 seconds to play in OT. Shine a three. Got it! What an afternoon for Ty Shine from long range. In Amica's mind, right from the start, go for three. Career high 26 for Shine. And Seton Hall leads by one. Timeout Temple with 14.6 to play in overtime. It has been Ty Shine's afternoon filling in for the injured Shaheen Holloway. A rip from long range. And there have been some stories this tournament season, but none better developing than this one right now. Ty Shine stepping in for the injured Shaheen Holloway. It was Holloway that won the first round game for Seton Hall. Holloway trying to stand up so he can see it. The final 14.6 in overtime. Seton Hall leading by one. Line hands to Greer. Ten seconds to play. Matched up with Shine. Greer makes his move. Greer in the lane. Gives it up. Throws it away. Tom Amerikan wants to talk things over. Seton Hall will have the basketball with 4.8 remaining and a one-point lead to move on to Syracuse. David Hall and Tom Wood. Opening tip is controlled to the Buckeyes and Scooty Penn. Goes out, bad pass underneath him. Shaheen Holloway. Grueling for him to watch this normally he's accustomed to being in there in the pressure moments and now Seton Hall has to get it in a foul call before the inbounds pass was even attempted and they look for the lowest percentage shooter on the floor Greg Morton who missed two earlier. This is where you don't have any choice though Pepe Sanchez up encouraging his teammates but no choice with the inbounds pass. There are no timeouts remaining. Earlier, Holloway reacted, standing on his right leg, the good one. After the throwaway by Lynn Greer, and now Morton at the free throw line with 4.8 left. As mentioned, no timeouts left for either team. Seton Hall leads by one. 52% free throw shooter. Oh, calmly hits the first. And cleanly also. Seton Hall has to be ready to react right here. Defensively, regardless of what happens, they have to stay away and not pick up the foul. Temple, on the other hand, has to get it and go. Final 4.8. Morton's second free throw. That one is no good. No timeouts remaining. Greer. One second for the win. Wow. Oh, good. Seton Hall has done it. 
They upset the number two seed in the East Temple in overtime, 67 to 65. The Pirates are going to Syracuse in the Sweet 16. What caused the problem here, the guards had to come back for the basketball. Look at the guards for Seton Hall, though. Jump, stay away. Very close off the left rim. The story is complete for Tommy Amaker. He has experienced this as a player, as an assistant coach, but never as a head coach. And the emotions for Shaheen Holloway, how sweet it is. Forced to go to the hospital with an injured left ankle, x-rays negative, and then he sees Lynn Greer, desperation heave at the end of overtime. And once again, John Chaney will come up short in his bid to get to a Final Four. 67-65, Seton Hall wins it in overtime over Temple, and the Pirates move on. That's it from here. Let's go to New York. Great Hummel. All right, Ian, thank you very much. Uh, Temple becomes the third number two seed to fall in the tournament. Seton Hall, the winner, 67-65. They will meet Oklahoma State next. Those of you expecting action in Birmingham, UConn and Tennessee are underway. The Volunteers lead at 9-8. We'll be sending you there. Looking for action in Nashville, Tennessee, Miami, and Ohio State. The Buckeyes lead at 7-6 in the early moments. Those of you ticketed for that game, we will send you there. And in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, tip time for Kansas and Duke is 5-15. We will send you folks off to Nashville for the start of, or for action there, and then get you to Winston-Salem for the start of your game. And all of that will happen coming up up right after this message and a word from your local station.